Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name's Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 168. Thank you guys for all the kind words on the new backdrop. Jeff said he hated it. I asked Jeff, I said, hey, bro, let me get your honest opinions of the new backdrop, the set, how it's evolved, what it looked like. What do you think? Tell me you love it. And then he texted me back and he said, hey, man, basically, I hate it. And so I now have to, I'm, I have to tear this down. I have to then, and I got to order something new. This costs so much money already. Now I have to spend more money because Jeff hates the backdrop, dude. Can you believe what it? What are we doing? I mean, it's honestly, it just, he has to get a button press. He has to get a button press because now if anyone's opinion matters on this planet, it's not mine, it's not yours, it's Jeff's. And so Jeff hates the backdrop and, you know, I loved it. I I asked Megs, I said, Megs, do you like the backdrop? She says, yes, I love it. I asked other people, they love it. But Jeff hates the backdrop. So what I need everyone to do is um, destroy his life. We need to pretty much uh, make him just a little bit miserable. So find Jeff on all the social media platforms and just leave comments like, why don't you like the backdrop? Why do you hate the backdrop, Jeff? Jeff, what don't you like about the backdrop? Jeff, why do you hate the backdrop? Jeff, why do you hate the backdrop? On every single one of his Instagram posts, go find Jeff on Instagram and leave a comment on every one of his posts Right now, for the 14 people that listen, he'll be like, oh my God, that's so many comments on my Instagram post. I hate it. My life is miserable. And then it'll be a success. What are we doing? And so, basically, that's what I'm talking about. Jeff hates the backdrop. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I don't know. I'm going to ask him again. I'm going to ask him again. I'm going to let it marinate. I'm going to let him get used to it. I'm going to let him understand what's going on and then I'll ask him again. And if he inevitably then doesn't necessarily hate it, then maybe, maybe we can still be friends and maybe we can keep the backdrop. But as of right now, as it stands, Jeff's opinion, he hates it. I mean, I'm sure everyone else does, but that's not what's important. What's important is Jeff's opinion. And so we're kicking off this episode, guys. It's it's gonna be a little light before we get into the heavy. So let's let's just let's take a deep breath. Let's nerd out a little bit because the world, hey, hey whoo, ha, yeah. We're just ah, we're living in it, right? So basically, this week, uh, some very 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 uh, interesting and fun things happen. One of which being. The end of the Arrowverse on the CW for my uh, fellow nerds and people out there who know what that means. Uh, basically, it's over. It's over now, dude. Okay. And for the average person, I'm assuming that this is probably news to you. What are we doing? Because I'm going to take a guess that the majority of people, the majority, like most of us, the average person who is familiar, if you know what the Arrowverse is, then you're familiar, you know, Arrow, Stephen Amell, the CW, those now four words combined together should mean exactly what it means to all of us. And so when, uh, when I tell you this is news for most people, because this is on average, listen, when Arrow came out, we all watched it. We all watched season two. Banger. Probably one of the season two of Arrow, arguably one of the best out of the entire freaking thing ever. What are we doing? And so then Arrow season three, we all were kind of like, okay, where are we going? And then most of us kind of Arrow season four, season five didn't really make it past that point. Because also then at that time, we had the flash and all of us were in on season one of the flash 
And then we got season two of The Flash. And then we were like, okay, we're not going to keep doing the same thing every season, right? Barry's not going to have to go back to the past, fix something, come back to the future, realize what he did in the past, fucked it all up, and then go back to the past to put it back to the way it was so everyone's happy again. And that's a whole season. We're going to do that. Eight more times? Okay, we're all out after season two. What are we doing? And then, you know, we get, we get, uh, we get Supergirl. We then get Legends of Tomorrow. Once we get into the multiverse of it all, we get into it all. So the Arrowverse here, let me break the whole thing down from start to finish, okay? Okay. The franchise begin with Arrow, based on the character The Green Arrow, which debuted in October of 2012. It was followed by The Flash in 2014, and if you remember, no one watched it, myself included, uh, Vixen, the web series in 2015. This is when they were releasing their CW online for free, watch everything on our app for free because there's ads, and so they tried to get us over there. And then after that, they expanded in January of 2016 to debut Legends of Tomorrow, starring characters who previously appeared on both Arrow and The Flash. Uh, And then later in the years, uh, the CW series Supergirl, um, having already crossed over with The Flash, moved to the CW for the remainder of its run. That's right, it did. Supergirl started on uh, CBS then uh, just moved to CW because that's where it made sense to be. Um, a second web series, Freedom Fighters, The Ray, was released in 2017. I have no idea what that is, which followed Ray uh, Terrell, The Ray, okay, fine, who uh, would have made a live action appearance during that year's crossover, Crisis on Earth X, in addition to the live action web based series. Um, The franchise has spawned three promotional tie-in live action web series, Blood Rush, Chronicles of Cisco, and The Flash uh, Stretched Scenes, released in 2013, 2016, and 2017, respectively. A fifth series, Batwoman, premiered in 2019. Six ensemble crossover events uh, involving many of the live action series from the Arrowverse have taken place, beginning with, <clears throat> stick with me, Flash vs. Arrow in 2014 and concluding with Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, between 2019 and 2020. Additionally, Matt Ryan reprised his role as John Constantine from the NBC series Constantine. Uh, initially in guest appearances in episodes of Arrow and Legend of Tomorrow before uh, becoming a series regular for the later, uh, for the latter, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, in addition to continuing storylines from former series. <sighs> and in 2023, the franchise concluded with a ninth and final season of The Flash. And then, uh, and then, of course, we got this year uh, the uh, another Superman show. I don't even know the title of that. The, it's I, I, woo! I don't even have that information. Of course, this is how prepared we are for this episode. You know what I mean? What are we doing? So uh, the Superman series ended this week. They finally and definitely, dude, killed off Superman. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but hey, it's fine. He can be back. He'll come back. It's Superman. It's so weird. He had kids. They, his kids had kids. So we've got little baby mini Supermans running around. We see his soul leave his body. He goes and finds Lex Luthor, who's now dead because he put him in prison. And then, boom, he uh, sees Lois Lane and he crosses over into heaven or whatever remission, whatever you refer to the afterlife as. And so that's the end of that series. And that's a dunzo rap so for the DC Universe TV shows on the CW. Uh, and basically, we have no one else but James Gunn to thank for this. Um 
he is now in charge since Marvel kicked him out for what? He had like a tweet from like 2014 or something. What are we doing? He's since been working for DC, trying to revamp their whole movie uh, situation that they have going on over there. Now, the issue is you cannot have brand new Superman movies and Supergirl and Flash, and you can't do, you can't have movies competing with the TV show. So James Gunn basically said to CW, shut it down, dude. I'm taking over, I'm putting all these characters in the movies and we're bringing them all back and I can't have you putting out these like shitty TV shows continuously competing with the IP and everything else we're trying to do over here at uh, DC and Warner Brothers. So no more, that's it. Um, I think I'm going to attempt to go back and watch it all it's going to be insane. I mean, it starts with Smallville, dude. Like, it, it theoretically, I know it technically starts with the Green Arrow, but as far as DC superhero TV shows on the CW, it starts with Smallville, then we got the Arrowverse, then we ended with the new Superman series, and it just, wow, incredible. What a, what a, a job well done. For the CW. Now, unfortunately, what this means uh, is that with uh, <clears throat> with the uh, Green Arrow and all of his vigilante friends off the streets of the CW, we've got people now taking it into their own hands. What are we doing? Uh, AKA this mystery person. Still on the run. Uh, I don't believe we've caught him yet as of recording this. Knowing my luck, by the time this comes out and you see it, uh, I'm sure developments will be had. But as of this very moment, uh, it, it's kind of a crazy situation when we have United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson fatally shot outside of a Hilton hotel in uh, Midtown, New York City, in a targeted attack. Uh, so we have an unknown gunman. We have kind of a blurry picture uh, of him. He was at some point, in fact, on a bike, and that's all we know about him. He used a silencer, and he knew how to use a gun when it jammed. He unjammed it and continued shooting this man, uh, cold-blooded, in the middle of the street in New York City. What are we doing? It was, in fact, 6 a.m. in the morning, but, uh, you know, still people around. Plenty of witnesses at, with plenty of HD iPhones in their hands, uh, but all we have is this blurry uh, kind of surveillance camera footage from across the street to identify this unknown criminal. The CEO of insurance giant United Healthcare was gunned down Wednesday outside a luxury Midtown hotel, a targeted attack by a chilling uh, methodical killer who used a firearm with a silencer, police said. His name was Brian Thompson, RIP to you. Thoughts and prayers go out to friends and family, anyone close to Mr. Thompson. What are we doing? Uh, he was 50 years old. It was repeatedly shot by the masked gunman who had been waiting outside the Hilton Hotel along 6th Avenue where the CEO was hosting an investor's conference, uh, said the New York City, uh, New York Police Department Commissioner Jessica Tisch. Uh, many people passed the suspect, but he appeared uh, to wait for his intended target, she said. Um, and, uh, man, uh, the cold blooded gunman was, uh, remained on the loose late Wednesday, uh, and could be seen in disturbing surveillance footage obtained by the post, uh, claiming firing multiple gunshots, uh, at the victim at around, uh, 6 46 AM. Uh, God, there's so many more details and I don't think I'm going to get into them. 
Ah, uh, man. Um, investigators firmly believe a phone found <clears throat> in an alleyway near the Hilton belongs to the gunman and obtained, uh, obtained a search warrant to comb through its contents. Uh, sources told the post a manhunt was underway for suspects uh, as the NYPD and Crime Stoppers offered a $10,000 reward. What are we doing? Let me tell you something. <clears throat> it's 2024 and we're still in Biden's inflation uh, economics here. $10,000 doesn't do much for a family. Really, I, I mean, listen. I understand that could probably get a lot of people through the next couple of months. But if you want us out of bed, if you want me to leave the comfort of this home, if you want me to be retroactively looking for this man, especially when, no, I'm not getting into it, but if you want me to be excited to go find this man who, by the way, knows how to use a gun, still has a gun, has a silencer on said gun, and is not afraid to shoot someone multiple times point blank range. What are we doing? Then I'm going to need you to add one more zero to that reward. You need to make it $100,000 and then I think maybe we'll have somewhat of a chance to find this man, okay? $10,000 isn't cutting it. Uh, based on the evidence we have so far, it does appear that the victim was specifically targeted, Kenny said, but at this point, we do not know why does not appear to be a random act of violence. Thompson was a well-respected man in his field, ranking in a salary of nearly $9.9 million a year. Well, maybe that had something to do with it. Uh, to head the nation's largest private health insurer, according to Economic uh, Research Institute. So there's also uh, stories out now that the shell casings that were found on the ground uh, that day also had words engraved uh, into the side of them, uh, something like justice and liberty for all, something like that, dude. But it's kind of this heinous, vigilant, like I, there's rumors <clears throat> swirling on Twitter that like the, the guy who shot him had like a family member, I think maybe die from cancer and like United Health probably didn't give them the treatment they needed and made it probably a little bit difficult for the family having to go out of pocket for their health treatments like most cancer patients do. What are we doing? But our higher ups are making tens of millions of dollars a year. Listen, uh, it's unfortunate but I don't think I don't think anything else is uh, has has come from uh, has come from this story. Let's double check. Uh, manhunt for killer enters third day. I mean, so still on the loose. Don't think maybe. Don't know. Don't know if they're gonna find him. And. Um, it's looking like uh, it's, it's who we'll see. We'll keep you up to date on the story here at the What Are We Doing podcast. You know what I mean? So listen, for those of you who don't know, we've got boy oh boy, uh, this this weird this weird beef we have now stirring up within the the rap hip hop industry and the stand up comedy scene. I mean. Weird times, like I said, in the United States. It's weird times. And this is what happens. This is what happens when we have the interim of the presidency. Policies are getting passed. People are getting pardoned. People are, it's, it's the holiday time. It's exciting. The adrenaline's pumping. So you never know what people are going to say and what people are going to do. And so, listen, the... The stand-up comedians of the world, they've they've been they've been busy these last few weeks, okay? 
They've been just kind of in their own feelings. They've been in their own kind of special way. Now that, now that their boy Donald Trump won, and hey, by the way, all it, Rogan, Theo, Tim Dillon, okay, Tony, all these people, all of Rogan's podcaster friends had the opportunity and or actually had on Donald Trump, J.D. Vance. They made the Republican vote known this year, okay? It was blatantly clear that most, not all, but most of the Rogan universe voted for Donald Trump. So now that their boy won the election, they're kind of in this new area of like, hey, Donald Trump, baby, he's back. We got free speech back from Zaddy Trumpets. Zaddy Trumpets is going to be back in office, a.k.a. our freedom of speech has never been more protected. What are we doing? And so they're all kind of wilding out right now. They're in their emotions. They don't know what to do. For example, we've got Brendan Schaub. He's over here crying for 30 minutes on his Thick Boy podcast from like a four-word Nate Diaz tweet. Joe Rogan, he just got, he, he's, he's on his way to becoming unhinged now. We've seen the full transformation of Joe Rogan to where he's now calling out Joy Behar for calling him out on believing in dragons to the point where he's claiming he doesn't, but deep down, Daddy Rogan, we all know, baby, you believe in the dragon. What are we doing? Bert Kreischer, he, Bert Kreischer cannot stop lying to himself. Bert Kreischer is on a podcast every single week, whether it's his own, whether he's a guest, whether it doesn't matter. Bert Kreischer will not stop talking to the camera saying, oh, I don't read the comments. I don't read the comments. I'm not affected by the comments. The comments don't bother me, bro. I don't read the comments. I don't read them. But then when he's two double tequilas, triple tequila, triple vodka, triple Tito's and sodas deep, every single weekend, he gets on his phone, he opens YouTube studio, and he goes directly to Reddit, and he reads every single fucking comment. What are we doing? And so now Bert's on his podcast crying because Reddit in its infinite wisdom, this is why we love Reddit. I don't understand it. I don't use it. But when I hear about the things that happen over there, I get real excited. Like all the Wall Street bed stuff, all the podcast stuff, all the drama stuff. Reddit's the place to be. I got to learn how to use Reddit, dude. But apparently the people of Reddit are now taking bets on over under when Burt Kreischer's gonna have a fucking heart attack and kick the bucket. What are we doing? And as soon as Burt found this out, he wasn't happy about it. He started crying, he started having a breakdown because he thought everyone loved him. And the issue is, when you're rising to the top, they do, Burt. When you're rising to the top, they do. They love you. You're the greatest, you're the best. And on that way up, we all did. On Do Do When Donald Trump was the apprentice and just talking about rumors whispering about him being the president back in like, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010 era, maybe a little later, I don't know the correct dates, but he's on The View, they're loving him, they're massaging his shoulders while he's talking about his policy and what he would do as president, and they loved it. And now, fast forward to his second term, they're calling him a monster, they're calling him a dictator, they're calling him the worst thing to ever happen to the United States of America. What are we doing? On your rise to the top, they will love you, and as soon as you're there, they will throw you off the cliff. We've seen it happen time and time again, and Burt Kreischer isn't handling it well to the point where he's physically crying and being emotional on his own podcast, talking about how he doesn't read the comments. 
but somehow finds himself in the comment section of every single Reddit post that his name is attached to. Then you got Tom Segura shaved his beard. Everyone fucking made fun of him. Of course, he couldn't wait to run to his wife, Christina, and cry about it. And to top it all off, we've got Tony Hinchcliffe doubling down on his Donald Trump Madison Square Garden rally Puerto Rico joke. We covered it like two, three, four, five weeks ago. Now we've got the official drop of garbage. Tony Hinchcliffe's new comedy set. We're not calling it a special, okay? We're not calling it a special. What are we doing? The Tony Hinchcliffe garbage is not a stand-up special. Tony Hinchcliffe's garbage. Here's your review. And spoiler alert from here on out. Tony Hinchcliffe's garbage is a 35, call it 30 minute stand-up set. It is not a special. It is in a four by three square, weird vertical, like shape of a resolute resolution. Okay. Not HD, nothing, no 4k, nothing. Whatever they had at the comedy mothership, you had a few people out in the audience with HD cameras and that's it. They didn't color correct it. They didn't do lighting. They didn't do anything. They just filmed the first one in six times that Tony's actually done stand up on stage this year. What are we doing? They just filmed it and cut it and released it. And he's calling it garbage. And it's his 2024 stand up special. The first five minutes, it's 37 minutes long with the first five to seven minutes. He, he says nothing. He says absolutely nothing than just three word sentences. And after every three words, the audience claps and laughs as if he is the most hilarious man on the planet. Fast forward to him getting through the, Hey, how's your month been? It's awkward for me, huh? I got canceled three times this month. (laughs) Once we get through all that nonsense, He then, the only bit, the only bit he has, which we milk for 15 straight minutes, is about how YouTube has come out with three new magical words you cannot say. And apparently, Tony Hinchcliffe is the only person who got the memo. What are we doing? I didn't get an email about it. Podcasters didn't get an email about it. Other comedians didn't get an email about it. Tony Hinchcliffe is the only one who knows that you can no longer say the F word when related to our allies in the LGBTQ plus community, the three letter F word that no one really likes to say anymore. The C word in reference to, you know what I mean? A kind of a, 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 a mean argumentative female. Some people would use it. Listen, apparently they say it in England all the time, okay? It's fine, but we don't say it here in this country because it's a bit disrespectful. What are we doing? And so, and then there's one other word, which I'm sure is just a word that no one should be using on a daily basis anyways. And Tony's pissed about it because this means he can't say it on Kill Tony Live because YouTube is where they make uh, uh, apparently a bunch of money from the advertisers on AdSense, AKA they won't be monetized. If someone comes on Kill Tony and says the F word, the C word, all these forbidden words, now Tony won't make his nut for the month and he can't afford whatever hotel room he sleeps in on a nightly basis. And so we get through that 20 minute bit. Then he talks about Donald Trump some more and that's it, dude. He doesn't say anything funny. He doesn't say anything that we didn't already know. And he is just riding this wave, thanking God, praising whatever fashion manufacturer makes the vest and belt buckles and the tightest pants on the planet that he wore during this special that Donald Trump won the election. What are we doing? 
And for reasons that he explains halfway through, because YouTube doesn't allow you to say these words, and this is the only bit he could come up with, he sits there and has unknown comedians give him gold every single week. And the best bit that Tony Hinchcliffe can come up with because he could be ripping off these guys. Half these guys are not the William Montgomery's. They're not the Casey Rockets. They're not the Dave Lucas's. And Dave Lucas, by the way, just steals his jokes from Twitter. So let's just be real about what it all actually is. He could be stealing the jokes from his stand-up comedy people that does his show every week because half of them won't make it. And he could actually put together a decent hour long special and we, half the people would not know the wiser. What are we doing? His new multi-million dollar friends at Netflix wouldn't know the wiser, but instead he put a 20 minute bit about how you can't say the word F-A-G on YouTube. And that was the meat and potatoes of everything Tony Hinchcliffe gave us to just bring us all back to the fact that he gives a shit about pollution and landfills and how Puerto Rico has a problem with them. And apparently what we didn't know about the joke was that they have an issue and it's overflowing and the streets have garbage in them and he really cares about the fucking environment of Puerto Rico. What are we doing? And that's why he said what he said. So get with the times. So all of that leading up to the fact that we have heard not yet one thing from our boy that is worth talking about until now, Andrew Schultz. And so Andrew Schultz is now seemingly trying to get a slice of that monetization pie that Drake got a few months ago by beefing with Kendrick Lamar. Can you believe this? So Kendrick Lamar, for those of you who don't know, dropped a mediocre surprise album like we said he would. We predicted that here. Uh, Ahead of the Super Bowl, you can do the Super Bowl with four to five songs that you already have performed at the Super Bowl. So he needs new music like Squabble Up to perform and open with at the Super Bowl. And then he'll go into all of his new hits and it'll be a mediocre show that we all talk shit on uh, the day after the week following. What are we doing? You know? You know? And so, listen, so if you haven't heard any of the new Kendrick Lamar album, that's something you're not missing out on because guess what, dude? The first 30 to 45 seconds of Squabble Up is the only song worth talking about. That's it. You won't hear any of them on the radio. You won't hear any news about it. It'll be over in a minute. The only reason I'm here to talk about it is because I'm with interwebs within kind of interested in the comedy and the hip hop scene. Shout out to 280 plus. We're going to talk about it. It's Kendrick Lamar versus the white comedian. So Kendrick Lamar releases this album and in one of his songs, he mentions a line. Here's the lyrics. He says, don't let no white comedian talk about no black woman. That's law. And so a few people took this to heart. There's a few comedians thinking that they fit the shoe of this lyric from Kendrick Lamar on his new album. Uh, But the most notable and based on the evidence that we found, uh, it's essentially... um, it would seem that Andrew Schultz is the Cinderella of the story. What are we doing? So with that being said, let's go back. Let's go back a few months and take a look at a flagrant two episode, flagrant two, of course, Andrew Schultz, Akash, uh, Mark, and uh, the the other dude on the couch. I don't know their names. They're just there to laugh at him. What are we doing? If it's not blatantly clear from everything that you are about to see, every clip that I am about to show you, everything that you are about to witness from Andrew Schultz, it is nothing flagrant to 
has become nothing but him just spouting bullshit after bullshit after bullshit out of his mouth and the three to four to two, however many, depending on scheduling of his goons are there, they are just there to justify, laugh at, and give Andrew a pass for whatever he has to say or whatever he thinks the hot take of the week is. What are we doing? Their opinions don't matter. They, they are just there to laugh to, at him and prop him up on this pedestal that he has created for himself. Like, let's be honest, We're, they already all rode the wave of their own comedy specials like Mark and Akash put one out, I think, like this year, last year, that probably won't be happening again. Like, the, the spotlight of them is fading because what we are realizing now is that it is just an Andrew Schultz show and the other three to four boys who are there are there to laugh at him and make him feel good about himself. So let's go back a few months. Where are we going back? September. It's September 19th, and Andrew Schultz has on uh, these um, these British podcasters, okay? Uh, their shits, shits and Gigs, I think, is their, is their podcast name, and they're talking about... Uh, they are talking about white men dating black women. And so this, uh, this at first wasn't an issue. Let's take a listen. Like, Glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, he's nah, yeah. 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 bro. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. They yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because they're so stressed <laughs> being around this black girl complaining about shit all the time. That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard they because the there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the f*** out of them. <laughs> <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> I think I think the black girlfriend effect. Hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys? Have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. 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 Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Play it safe. What are we doing? Play it safe. Play it safe. Okay. Yes, we love them all, and as do we. Okay, so that that was the start of this whole thing. Fast forward to like three or four weeks later, this wasn't an issue until the British boys flew back home and went on their podcast. And I guess what happened was much like things do, it was a slow snowball effect to the point where some of their audience wasn't really aware of their appearance on Flagrant until a little bit later. And once their audience digested everything that happened there, they weren't too happy about what was said. And so there's obviously, uh, obviously underlining racist tones, like just claiming that, that, that black women will stress white men out and make them lose their hair, which is obviously not true. Okay. We love it. Listen, I've got the, the only, my, the only people coming to my wedding next year on my side, I have like three, and they're all my black friends. What okay? are we doing? So there's, you can't say that we don't, we're, this is, we don't condone it, okay? And so when, when you have comedians who think that, you know, comedy, they're comedians, they can get away with it because it's just a joke, it's comedy, haha, -ha, we laugh it off. Well, some of the audience members of the other boys' podcast didn't like it. So then they apologized. Then Flagrant responded again, making fun of the boys for apologizing because it was just a joke, et cetera, et cetera. Like we have, we've got a black guy on Flagrant too. How can we be racist? What are we doing? Is the exact card that they slide on the table every single time this happens. So we, we can blatantly kind of, you know, assume that, uh, that, that the lyric on the Kendrick rap was 100% about Andrew Schultz. Now, Andrew is smart and he knows that the lyric is about him. And there's one thing, one thing that Andrew Schultz has wanted since the very first day, since the very first day, Andrew Schultz started flagrant one started whatever podcast and whatever radio studio 
the since the very first day he knew he was recording a podcast episode with Charlemagne, Andrew Schultz has had one goal, and that is to have Drake Aubrey Graham on his platform. As soon as as soon as Andrew Schultz gets Drake on his podcast, he feels that that is peak. That is the epitome. That is the top. You cannot go any higher. Okay. And with a platform as big as flagrant, the Patreon makes hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars every month. I don't know why, but when you have such audacious goals as having someone like Drake on your podcast, let's be honest, you have Drake on your stream XQC, you have Drake anywhere in your atmosphere. It's about as big as having Donald Trump on. And I'm pretty sure the flagrant boys didn't, I don't, that, did they have, I don't think they had Trump on. So they didn't get that opportunity uh, from him. Maybe he did. I don't, I, if I'm wrong on that, I might be wrong, but that's besides the point. It doesn't affect the way that he has now maneuvered this entire situation in his favor. And he knew that when he read that line, he was going to a make it his, his, Andrew Schultz, as soon as he saw that line from Kendrick, heard it, saw the lyric, read the lyric, someone probably sent him the lyric and said, yo, bro, haha, this is about you, motherfucker. Uh, he knew, one, he was going to 100% make it his, and two, he was going to 100% make it the worst moment for not only himself, but Kendrick Lamar, and so that it would 100% go viral the way it is to get Drake's attention because it's now at the point to where every single radio station, hot 97, every outlet, every single person on the side of hip hop, music, rap, comedy, the podcast scene. We are now in this boiling pot, this mixing pot all together because all of our feeds are now merging because Andrew Schultz has taken it upon himself to start a beef with Kendrick Lamar. It didn't start that way, but he is finishing it that way because he knows that's what will get him the views and the clicks and the attention of Drake and the potential for the Instagram DM and the potential for the flagrant boys to fly to Canada and get that interview under wraps. Because if they can prove that they hate Kendrick Lamar just as much as Drake does, then it's game over. Then Drake will fly him in, they'll get the exclusive, they'll talk to him for an hour, and it'll probably be one of the biggest episodes that those boys ever do. And Andrew will promise them the world if in which that happens. Until it happens. And so with him learning and taking these lyrics, Andrew Schultz has decided not to take the easy way out, not to take the creative way out, but he has decided to turn the shock factor and the shock value all the way up to 100. He has decided to take the most insane approach to say the most insane things to respond to Kendrick Lamar with in order to get media attention and it's working. Listen, listen to what he has to say here. Ready? Listen to this. Very, it's very important to him to protect black women. That's why he's never done a song with. I apologize. This is let's pause for a second. This is Akash. This is, and this is Akash backing him up on this. Okay. And so this is them calling Kendrick a hypocrite. Like if, if Andrew Schultz can't just joke on a podcast about white men dating black women, then why can Kendrick Lamar call them out for that when Kendrick Lamar does features and songs and has lyrics about black men hitting black women and black men who have hit black women and domestic violence and all these other characters that Kendrick Lamar surrounds himself with, but Andrew Schultz is the the victim here andrew schultz is in the wrong and so this is akash in defending and just schultz just eats it up it's just it's just it's just it's it, he's just it's 
boy, oh boy, does he just bask in the sun. Look at his face. I mean, you can see it on his face now because he knows Akash is going to cook here for the next 60 seconds and he's just going to eat it up. And they think they're destroying. They think right now they're in a beef with another comedian and they're destroying him when in reality... They don't stand a ch it's the, the the comedy versus rapper beef doesn't work. Like this is cringe and it's disgusting. And so this is this is Akash's defense of the whole thing. Listen to this and then we'll get to Schultz. Ready? He's very, it's very important to him to protect black women. That's why he's never done a song with an abuser confirmed. He's oh, never done a song with anybody thank that's, God. that's thank uh, God. suspected of abuse. Thank he's God. never threatened to remove his music from Spotify thank because God. they removed R. Kelly's music, who for sure f and held captive underage black women. Hold on, hold on, he, hold on. This is all very important to Kendrick. Wait a minute, just let me understand what's going on here. Because I think that you're using sarcasm as a comedic mm -hmm. device. It is, it is a comedic device. But you're so smart right now that <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're serious or yeah, making yeah, jokes. Yeah. Are you saying that Kendrick Lamar put it on wax, that he is protecting black women from white comedians' jokes, but not the kidnapping, molestation, and rape oh, yeah, yeah. of R. Kelly? And yes. it actually, in reality, he would take his own music off Spotify to protect- Oh, that's it. The other word you can't say on YouTube is the R word. What are yeah, we doing? that's it. That's it. Well, and of course, we don't, we don't like that word anyways, okay? We would never, you can't, listen, that's just, we don't, and that's, and that's just the whole point of this because you can't condone essay and just, uh, listen. Protect R. Kelly? Yeah. Someone Ooh. who's kidnapped, A sexual molested, predator, yeah. and black women? Oof, children. Are you saying that he's done songs with, with other men who have potentially put hands on black Not women? Not potentially, confirmed. Wait a minute, convicted? Yeah, I don't know what you call uh, Chris Brown, but yeah, whatever that <laughs> is. Look, dude, not breezy. Look, dude, look, 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 look. I understand that my style of satirical comedy, my satire, my dry humor, my interludes, my ability to go from serious to not instantly, my ADHD, I understand that this podcast is hard to figure out. I understand that like most people don't get it. And then, hey, once you do, it's kind of like a light bulb and then you're in and you're a fan and you're along for the long haul, right? And so we're slowly kind of building that audience here, but it's, 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 it's a very unique taste. But this type, this type of, of, of deflection and, and especially, listen, I'm just going to say it right now. We're, we've, we've uninvited, we're cutting him, we're not with Andrew anymore, okay? If you see me and Andrew and anyone else in a room together, I'm literally not with him, I'm with literally anyone else. Like, I don't, I don't have, uh, like, I, you know what I mean? I don't, I, we're not associate, the fact that Andrew has surrounded himself with every ethnicity, basically on the planet so that he can do whatever and say whatever in the respect of stand-up comedy. It's not, I don't think it's a road that you should be going down. Like these are not, yeah, we get it. But like, yo, that's kind of the rap game. You can, Kendrick Lamar just said the same thing that they're saying about Kendrick Lamar about Drake. Like it, there's not really, there's, Diddy, there's so many. The rap game is kind of notorious for this. There's only a handful of artists who don't necessarily have their hand in the pot of doing bad things. And that doesn't go for white rappers either. What are we doing? Like, let's be honest. Like, Marshall Mathers has a past. I'm sure Jack Harlow has done some terrifying things himself. Like, there are, like... Like Macklemore, the precious, the saint, the good boy Macklemore has a freaking pet. He has a history with drugs and alcohol. He's on this whole sober kick. He's like, he's preaching for the war over in Pal. Like it's there's, listen, all rappers, all celebrities, all comedians have their flaw. Every single human being has their flaws. But when you use their flaws against them, in the name of stand-up comedy, it just, 
especially when Kendrick Lamar never said a name to begin with, it just doesn't seem it's it's gross. It's gross and we don't like it. So now so now we get to the like this part really just kind of just I don't I don't understand it. I don't know why we had to turn it up to 10. I don't know why we had to go this way. But this is Andrew Schultz talking about what he would do if this beef between him and Kendrick Lamar would ever turn to a face-to-face, in-person, physical altercation, this would be Andrew's approach. They will kill me. They will destroy me. They'll find me in the street. They'll and cut me up. They'll shoot. They'll do whatever. Talking about Kendrick's guy. entourage. But just Kendrick. I would make love to him. There's nothing he could do about it. Just, just Kendrick Lamar. I would make love to him. And the only thing that he could do is decide if it's consensual or not. That's the only. And the only thing that everyone else in the room can do at this point, because they are so uncomfortable. They are so uncomfortable. Akash is just laughing uncontrollably. What are we doing? Because he has no idea where this came from. He has no idea why he's saying it. And he just can't help but laugh to cover his nervousness, his uncomfortableness. Mark is just sitting there thinking of the best thing he can do on the laptop. Mark is thinking, "Mm okay, can... Oh boy, uh, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I hope my podcast pops off real soon, dude, because the best I can do is a picture of Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Swift. And then the man on the end, I mean, this guy is just to the point where he he can't he's speechless. He does not say he says maybe three words in this whole next three minutes that we have to get through. And it is just a blatant abuse of privilege and power and platform. And Andrew Schultz using comedy to say that if he were to be in a room with Kendrick Lamar, he would sex assault him. And this is where the world of comedy currently stands. If it's me and Kendrick, if it's me and Kendrick, no, this is about physics. It's about physics. I don't even know if I get hard. But if we're in a cell, there's a chance that that if if we're in a cell and we're bored and we done tattooing each other, whatever you do in the cell, and we ran out of board games and we did all the other things, we more racist shit. What are we doing? It doesn't stop cleaned everything and I'm like man I might as well f- you <laughs> there's nothing he could physically do to stop that besides put his legs in there and choose a position maybe Mark, I'll let him you, choose a why position why are you pulling this picture up Mark why look, are you doing look, this look at, put, him, put up that picture with him and Travis Kelsey's girl look at that shit <laughs> oh my god dude that's unbelievable Mark is so unbelievably uncomfortable the only thing Mark can think to do is to stay relevant stay on topic stay with what's hot in the industry and what whiter what what we need right now is to just wipe down this situation and Taylor Swift is it Taylor Swift's the only answer get her up because that'll just that'll help maybe cushion some of the, what's ever about to come next and unfortunately Mark it wasn't your best attempt buddy I'm sorry don't get wrong there's people who can Against my will. I was in an elevator once with this drag queen, and this motherfucker was like 6'5. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> and we're yeah, in the yeah. elevator, and we're going down. I'm like, yo, if he wanted to take it, yeah. I gotta cause a ruckus or something like that. Like, now he's home of Now that's it. Now we've crossed the line. LGBTQ, all of our allies, all of our queers, all of our gays, all of our lesbians, all of our friends, all of our supporters. All of our supporters of them, all of our trans people, all of our friends, all of our family members, let's go get them. Go get them. Listen, if you're as soon as you're done telling Je- asking Jeff why he hates the new backdrop, the next Instagram account we need to go to is Andrew Schultz, and we need to put nothing but the pride and rainbow flag all over his post and ask him why he hates you. What are we doing? Okay, now we're going... 
He can't stand to be in an elevator with a drag queen for more than 30 seconds. He's already thinking of combatant maneuvers just in case he or she or they moves in a way that he feels to be uncomfortable. What a rancid, rancid fucking piece. Of, I don't even know what words I want to use to describe him. Piece of shit. What are we doing? Damn it. I got to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I got to do something to stop. He might enjoy it. I have no clue what they're into, but I know for with Kendrick that he he's talking a lot of shit, but if it came down to it, I could put him on my lap. I could feed him a bottle. I could put him on my lap. I could feed him a bottle and make love to him if I wanted to. And there's nothing he could do about it. I might not be a hard. Dick. Might just slap soft against his butt. But you can just beat him up. You don't, you don't just him, right? No, 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 no. We're not doing acts of physical violence over here, bro. Okay. No. That's that's what this is. An act of sweet love. This is an act of love. Oh, you're a pacifist. <laughs> I'm saying we. I could be romantic with him, and there's nothing he could do about it. To the point, like I think I'm so charming, he would just hey. fall into. It. Is he a psychopath? What are we doing? What a psychotic piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think yeah. he would just be so charmed. He would be like, damn, like, whap, 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 whap. let me suck it up. <laughs> the only thing he could do is after I was finished, like, write some words that rhyme together about it. Oh, that you know what would I mean? be fire. Like, that would and be that would, oh my God. He can make some calls. He can make some calls. Yeah, you want to talk about good. another album called Damn. <laughs> <laughs> <Be humble. laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Reincarnated. <laughs> Ask how penetrated. <laughs> Listen, but in all seriousness, uh, we love Kendrick Lamar, uh, our woke king. And um, and I think we're going to do our best to abide by his. I don't know what his rules are. All right. Are. So, and then is there, oh, God, is there more? There's more. There's more. Okay. Here's the last. And here, so he, he just keeps, he keeps going because we have to, we have to double down at this point. Once you realized once and i'm going to i'm i'm going to give him a small 1% we hate him we're 99% out on schultzy but it we're giving him a 1% benefit of the doubt and i'm going to assume because we're continuing the bit and we're double downing on the essay and them being in print like i don't i don't understand this style <laughs> listen it's so fucking funny coming from me saying I don't understand a style of comedy when 99.9% .9 of the planet doesn't understand mine. But like at least, at least most of what I say on this podcast is just factual and headlines and clickbait. And like I've got maybe 30% original opinions, 20% original bits, and the rest it's just kind of, you know, what everyone, including Andrew Schultz and 280 plus and every Hot 97 fucking what's Elvis Duran, what every single person has to say because those are the facts and those are the jokes and that's what basically every single media outlet on the planet does nowadays. So it's fine, but at least we have a little bit of respect, dignity, allyship towards our ethnic friends and family, our LGBTQ friends and family, and just would never, listen, we've, I know we've made some borderline on the fence gay jokes, and we've had bits about dogs getting adopted and a whole bunch of other shit, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's a little loosey-goosey compared to Andrew Schultz claiming that he would R word Kendrick Lamar multiple times. What are we doing? Body pillow. So I'd say <laughs> lay there rigor mortis, but I'm gonna put like your legs in between my oh. legs. Do you know how I like pregnant that. women yeah, sleep? Yeah, yeah, like a yeah, waifu, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. your wife. He's my waifu. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Only white comedians can make this joke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if we can, bro. This is a new law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you should have said that. White can. comedians don't drop up me in the ass. Like, yeah. I would have put that I in the song. I said his ass. <laughs> Excuse me? I said I'd make him hold his thighs together tight. Make a little <laughs> p*** out of that. <laughs> Not put my d*** where he doodles, Mark. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's gay make also. a little thigh p*** for me. Yeah, yeah, but he just said it. He just said it. What are we he doing? He just said it. Oh, he just said it, man. It's gross. Squeeze it tight. I need you like this. I need five 
and they still <laughs> just the uncomfortable of Akash. Akash, if I'm dude, I know for a fact. I know for a fact that Akash needs he his wife is bothering him on a daily basis of just telling him to leave this podcast, start your own thing. The Patreon followers will come for you because this, this is not it, bro. Make a little thought for like, me. Yeah, yeah. Squeeze oh. it tight. Mar- I'm sure like, Mark's yeah, wife I mean, feels the same. Two, 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 two. All right. Shut it down. Shut it down. What are Shut we it doing? down. Shut it down. Absolutely shut it down. We're not with him. Hey, we're not, I don't, we don't really, we don't associate with Andrew Schultz anymore. Uh, So listen, our last final uh, story to talk about today is this, uh, what is happening now in the crypto market. Apparently crypto's back in a big way. What are we doing? And to kick off this comeback, we have none other than Haley Welch, the talk to her, the hawk to her herself, spit on that thing, hawk coin officially happening this week. If you didn't get in on this, you've already missed out. It's over. The hawk coin is here. And listen, she promised us it would be different. This isn't like every other shit coin. This isn't like Doge. This isn't like any cryptocurrency from an influencer cash grab market rug pull situation that you've ever seen before. This is different. She's Haley Welsh. It's Hawk coin, baby. What are we doing? And so, uh, you know, with everything that she's done, we went into this with such high hopes and trust in Haley, T-I-H is what I'm saying, you know what I mean? We put all of it. I had about $5,000 ready to go for Christmas gifts this year, but basically when I saw, listen, when she got on that camera to start and said, hey, what's the move? What's one thing everyone needs to know in bed? And she's like, listen, here's the secret, ladies. You got to hawk to and spit on that thing. She opened the floodgates for relationships. She changed relationships sexually, mentally, and physically across the world with a simple bit of advice. All you got to do, ladies, is hawk to a spit on his or her thing. What are we doing? And so with that, with her not just signing with anybody, dude, she took her time and she realized that signing with Jake Paul and his better gambling network would be the best move for her podcast and her friends and family to become millionaires. And so that and everything else she does, she's got the Pookie app. She showed us Pookie finally. We have no more reason, no more reason to doubt her and to trust Hawk Tua, the shit coin. So I put five grand in right away. And wouldn't you know it, it only took 20 minutes for them to rug pull. I lost it all. What are we doing? I trusted her and I lost it all. So now, as you can imagine, just like us, there's multiple families on the brink of collapse because their Christmas present money, just like mine, Haley Welch is gone because daddy thought it'd be a good idea to just YOLO one off into this bull run. I lost out. I lost out on Bitcoin. I had Bitcoin. I had like 10 grand worth of Bitcoin. I had a third of a Bitcoin, dude, because I bought it at $40,000. The price it was at a few years ago, the price it was at at the beginning of this year, I had it and I was scared and I needed to buy Meg's an engagement ring that cost a lot of money. So I sold it and used it for that. So I was smart there, but I should have fucking waited. What are we doing? Because now it's at $103,000. I think it's dipped back down to like 98, 97 now. But as of yesterday, it topped out at about $103,000, $104,000. In light of Donald Trump being elected and policies potentially coming on Bitcoin and with companies and everything else through the new administration, thank you, Donald Trump. 
we now have to uh, endure this cryptocurrency bull run for an, the inevitable future. So Bitcoin's going through the roof. I'm regretting selling every single one. My eight to 10, I think it was like $10,000 crypto wallet would have been worth about 30 to 40 right now. What are we doing? So as you can imagine, I thought, well, hey, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I trust her. I trust the Logan brother, the Paul brothers, Logan and Jake. They haven't steered anybody. They haven't scammed anybody. They haven't steered anybody wrong with cryptocurrency before. Why not put some of the savings into Hawkcoin and see where this baby takes it? And I, I, you know, I thought Haley was there. I thought she was ride or die. And as it turns out, they're lying along the way. They scammed us all. And it was a giant rug pull and a waste of time. And so at least I can rest easy at night knowing that someone like CoffeeZilla has already investigated. He's already infiltrated the, the Twitter spaces. He's already talked to, they've talked to lawyers now. And this is just a 33 second sneak peek. This is how it's going over uh, at the investigation with coffee. Really happy to answer any questions. I have questions. I, I have questions. I'm raising my hand. Hey guys. What CoffeeZilla? Hey, God, she's sexy. This is one of the most miserable, horrible launches I've ever seen in my life. Okay, then why the fuck are you on? I've been tracing it on chain for a while. God damn it. We love Haley Welch because she's just, oh, making all the right decisions. What are we doing? I mean, I think you can still buy. I might put more money into this thing. If we can get the hot coin to pump back up again, I might be able to recruit my initial investment and turn my new investment into a better one than the original. I'm going to look into this a little bit further. And if CoffeeZilla hasn't destroyed the reputations of everyone involved yet, I might reach out. We might invest more. Hey, hold, baby. I should have held the Bitcoin. And so now I'm holding. I'm holding my Hawk coin. I'm downloading the Pookie app. It's the holiday season. I'm trying to buy my son some freaking magnetiles. And right now I got to come up with a plan to do so. And I think before the lawyers get involved and we're all in court together, I'm going to talk to Haley. I'm going to talk to the people involved. I'm going to reach out to Jake Paul. I'm going to see what we can do to rectify this loss and make this the best cryptocurrency that this generation's ever seen. What are we doing? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Levi McCurdy. This has been episode 168 of the What Are We Doing podcast. If you hate the backdrop like Jeff, let me know in the comments below. Shout out to you guys. Subscribe, like, and subscribe on this video. Because I just said that, a little thing should have lit up. The little thing should have lit up on the ring, the like and subscribe button. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. YouTube is where we live because we don't say the three forbidden words like Tony freaking Hinchcliffe. What are we doing? And Andrew Schultz and all of the freaking goons that don't deserve their platforms. I listen, it's not good anymore. It's not funny anymore. Comedians are supposed to be funny. And that's the bottom line. Shout out to you guys. Have a happy, happy weekend. I'll see you next time. Until the next one. Oh, episode 169. Ow! What are we doing? Let's go, babes. I'll see you guys next week. I gotta go pick up my son. Peace out!